of Envision, thank you all for joining us. Today we're very happy to have speakers representing three countries in the Envision portfolio, Cameroon, Nepal, and Tanzania. We hope you find the presentations and discussion useful in your work to control and eliminate NTDs. I'd like to introduce the speakers for today. Uh, Deepti Silwal Batrai is the Finance and Grants Manager from RTI International in Nepal. Patrick Mbia serves as the Deputy, excuse me, the NTD Deputy Program Manager for HKI in Cameroon. And finally, we're pleased to have two staff from IMA's program in Tanzania, Juma Romanus, the Finance and Administration Manager, and Dr. Boniface Idinidili, the Program Manager. For those of you new to webinars, some operational guidance is provided in the top right corner of your screen. You should be receiving your audio through your computer. If this is not working, you, you can connect through a phone landline. The phone number to dial is in the webinar invite. If you have any difficulties, please type your problem into the chat box and we'll try to help you resolve it. At any time during the webinar, if you have questions for any of our presenters, please feel free to type them into the chat box and we'll do our best to address them in the time we have. The slides of this webinar will be emailed out to everyone. We'd like to ask that you take a couple of minutes to complete a short evaluation at the end of the webinar. Your feedback is very important to us so that we can make sure we're addressing the topics that are useful to you in your daily work in NTD control and elimination. Finally, if you find this webinar beneficial, you can find our previous webinars on our website. I'd like to take a moment to give a very brief overview of the Envision project. Envision is an eight-year global project funded by the U.S. Agency for International Development. We work in partnership with National Neglected Tropical Disease Control Programs for the control and elimination of lymphatic filariasis, onchocerciasis, schistosomiasis, three soil transmitted helminths, and trachoma. Envision is currently working with national NTD programs in 19 countries. For more information, please check out our website at www.ntdenvision.org or follow us on Twitter at RTI Fights NTDs. I also wanted to let everyone know about the new NTD toolbox for preventative chemotherapy diseases, which includes the most used NTD guidance tools and resources developed by WHO, Envision, and other organizations working in NTDs. You can find everything from job aids, WHO guidance, training materials, and videos in the toolbox. Access the toolbox on the Envision website, and you can search by disease or by NTD program phase for whatever you're looking for. We have a very interesting roundtable for you today. Here is our agenda. To get things started, I will review the basics of fixed obligation grants. Each presenter will then have an opportunity to discuss how FOGs are used to address programmatic issues in their country. Presenters will then discuss challenges with FOGs faced by their country programs and how they were addressed. We will then review favorite tools that help staff in their day-to-day -day jobs of issuing and managing grants. At the end of the roundtable, we will take time to answer your questions and get your feedback before closing the webinar. We, however, we welcome you to type questions into the chat box anytime they arise during the webinar. When typing your question, please write the name of the presenter or country who the question is for. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the first topic, which is an overview of fixed obligation grants. Fixed obligation grants are grants that support very specific activities where there is certainty about the costs and the accomplishment of the activities in the grant is apparent. FOGs typically support of, ministries of health to implement the WHO NTD rollout package. Depending on the needs of the country program, elements of the package can include activities such as mass drug administration, training of community drug distributors and teachers, community mobilization and advocacy, IEC materials, etc. 
FOGS can also support m and &E activities. Examples include support supervision during MDA, data collection and reporting, coverage surveys, or disease-specific assessments such as transmission assessment surveys or trachoma impact surveys. What makes FOGS unique from other contractual mechanisms? Grantees are paid a set amount upon the achievement of a milestone. In order to receive payment, grantees must submit a properly prepared invoice along with the required technical reports to the issuing organization. It is not necessary to submit receipts to substantiate expenses incurred for grant activities. However, receipts for all grant-related expenses must be kept on file for at least three years after payment of the final milestone. You may be wondering what a milestone is. In keeping with the definition of a FOG, all milestones should be verifiable. Most Envision FOGs have anywhere from three to five milestones. This varies from country to country and from activity to activity and should take into account the needs of the Ministry of Health. For example, a FOG which supports MDA might have different milestones than a FOG supporting TAS. The process for determining milestones is not an exact science. The Envision program should review the work to be performed under the grant alongside the budget. The number of milestones and their amounts should be structured to ensure the grantee has funds available to complete the work. Some grantees, particularly host government entities, may not have cash reserves available to fund activities and then wait long periods of time for reimbursement. Milestones should provide an incentive to the grantee to continue working to complete all grant activities. The Envision Country Program should discuss the number of milestones as well as the format of each deliverable under a milestone with the grantee. FOGS can certainly be adapted to meet the needs of a particular country. This is an actual milestone used by the Envision Program in Senegal, where grants are issued to medical regions across the country, across the country for integrated MDA. We recommend providing report templates for each deliverable to grantees with their grant agreement as it clarifies expectations about the information needed from the grantee. We'll now move to the section of the agenda where our panelists will discuss how FOGs are used to address programmatic issues in their country, starting with Nepal. Unfortunately, our finance and grants manager is having technical difficulties, so I will speak on her behalf. As Nepal continues to reach the point of stopping LFMDA, it is critical for the Envision program to support the Ministry of Health's capacity building efforts. Envision Nepal previously issued requests for applications to identify local NGOs to implement disease-specific assessments. While this built the capacity of several NGOs to conduct pre-TAS and TAS, it was not building the capacity of the Ministry of Health to do the work themselves. The team reached out to the Vector Borne Disease Research Training Center, a host government entity, and a pre-award assessment was conducted to determine their suitability for receiving USAID funding. They've also participated in RTI's recent TAS training for Ministry of Health staff. Based on our findings from the pre-award assessment, we intend to seek USAID approval to work with the center to conduct all remaining tasks in Nepal. Boniface, we'd like to hear from you about Tanzania's ideas for using FOGS to address programmatic issues. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, I'm going to speak for two programmatic issues. My focus will be on low coverage and urban MDAs. Uh, for low coverage, the FOX gives you flexibility to change the number of milestones per a block of activity. And this, you, normally, in each milestone, usually we have three to five sets of activities depending on the type of MDA, whether it's community-based MDA, school-based MDA, and also determined by the type of drug package that is going to be used. Therefore, uh, by increasing the number of milestones for the low coverage districts, this supports the 
better distribution of funds. This is performance-based distribution of funds. And this is supported by intensified supportive supervision. But also, this is also gives a, a better way to address each activity as it is completed. But again, FOX gives the flexibility in uh, addressing issues to do with urban MDA. It helps in planning of activities. Uh, planning is the first part of the, it's one of the first activities in each milestone. So in urban MDA, usually there is a mixed approach in distribution of medicines. We use boots or the posts, but also is coupled with the, in semi-urban areas where we try to do house-to-house -house drug distribution. So this is a, the, the, the way to address the complexities of urban MDA. But also urban MDA have additional costs, which involves trans, transport for the drug distributors from one place to another place. And also we do have an increased focus and the costs for social mobilization. In urban settings, social mobilization is special because it's uh, important to use the media involving the radio, television stations, and the talk shows. This is different from the rural settings in villages where you can use uh, village meetings or you can use town criers to inform the communities on the decks and days of doing MBAs. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Boniface. Now over to Patrick, who will share HKI's experience in Cameroon with us. Thank you, Margaret. Hi, everyone. Uh, in Cameroon, in order to improve low coverages, we emphasize on two things related to field actors. Firstly, their training, and secondly, their supervision. And I would like to remind that these field actors are nurses from health areas and community drug distributors. So the training is to make sure that they master which population are eligible for each of the MDAs, uh, to make sure that they know how to deliver drugs, to make sure that they know how to report data using registers and the supervision is conducted to make sure that these actors, especially the community drug distributors, have covered all the eligible areas. So to help address concerns with low coverage through FOX, HKI in Cameroon now requires training related deliverables to include participant test scores, as each training session includes a pre-test and a post-test. This information helps to confirm whether CDDs or nurses have mastered training material. Other deliverables require supervision-related information, such as terms of reference for supervisory visits and travel orders, especially for nurses when observing community-based MDA. These deliverable documents help HKI to follow up how the MOH is running field activities. Uh, I would also want to outline something important about MDA in urban areas and conflict areas. You know, in Cameroon, having a single fork with the MOH would have been very, very difficult to manage because activities are implemented in 10 regions out of 10 and each region is unique. The solution was to develop a single fork for each region. So HKI has, has many forks, has regions. Therefore, if MDAs are delayed in one or two regions because of, let's say, geographical cultural or security or conflict constraints, it will not affect the remaining MDAs. And finally, I would like to remind that in every FOX, 
we set out a grant management team which the responsibility is to coordinate activities at the regional level to collect supporting documents from the health districts and to prepare and submit deliverable documents to HKI. This management team is also responsible to sort out conflicts that may occur in the work of their respective health districts. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Patrick. We'll now discuss challenges faced by the panelists in their countries and the solutions. I think you'll see that there are some similarities in the difficulties encountered across the Envision portfolio. Also, please remember to send us any questions you have. I'm really pleased that Deepti was able to join the call. So can you please start us off? Uh, thank you, Margaret. Uh, talking about challenges faced by Envision Country Program, um, USAID through RTI supports LFMDA in some districts across the country, while the government supports the remainders. Um, government districts are given 100% advance for the MDA. However, uh, USAID supported districts have POGs and they will receive the fund as per milestone report in installment basis. Thus, um, the district always requests 100% MDA fund in advance like other districts. Um, talking about another challenge is uh, fund transfer. Um, fund transfer, um, to remote district are challenges due to uh, limited banks and having not in enough banking technology for a speedy transfer. Also, environment rework is always um, uncertain and could get disturbed due to strike, riots, and uh, political issues. Sometimes even the natural calamities, flood, and landslide could stop the vehicle moments and affect the fog execution. Um, Margaret? Can you uh, discuss the solutions that you've implemented in Nepal? Oh, yes. Um, now, discussing the solution uh, now we have implemented uh, on the Nepal program, is, uh, as you can see on the slide, um, planning in advance is critical. So we make sure that districts understand what we expected of them and when uh, activities need to be completed within the schedule for MDA uh, set by the central level. Uh, we provide training to district officials on the POC mechanism and uh, check in with them regularly. Uh, uh, we make ourselves aware of the time it takes for the fund to move through the banking system. Um, we also consider uh, reducing number of milestones and structure the milestone report carefully to be sure that we get uh, we are getting the data we need. Um, and um, yeah, ma we make sure that milestones are uh, completed and funds are transferred in a timely manner uh, to ensure the district has uh, adequate gas on hand. Um, regarding the external factor challenges, um, they're always uncertain and could only be speculated. So we have to be prepared with uh, plan B and we continuously uh, stay in touch with stakeholder and um, head office staff. Thank you so much, Deepti. Patrick, can you please share a challenge you faced in the Cameroon program? Of course, Margaret. You know, the main challenge in Cameroon when we were developing Fox for the first time was to ensure that at each step the MOH has enough cash on hand to carry out activities, given that they have limited funding. So for each fork, what we did was to set out the first milestone made of only one activity with zero cost, which the objective was to show how the next step will be implemented. And as soon as we received the deliverable documents related to this first milestone, we provide the funding which covers all the cost of the activities listed in the second milestone. For all the other milestones, I mean from the second one to the penultimate, we inserted this activity, I mean the preparatory activity, which the cost is zero. And the diagram you, you, will, you will now see, the diagram you will see 
shows milestone number four and milestone number five of the community-based MDA. And you can notice that each of these milestones includes a preparatory activity. For milestone number four, this preparatory activity is being described how the supervision of the community-based MDA, which is implemented at the fifth step, will be conducted. And the most important thing to notice is that the $37,000 we are paying for milestone number four represent the total cost of the supervision of the community-based MDA, which is conducted at the milestone number five. But you know, designing such a model was not enough because since through FOX, we also aim to improve the MOH ownership and leadership, they needed to understand this model and agree with it. Therefore, at the beginning of every fiscal year, HKI holds a FOX starting meeting with the MOH, which helps to clarify any misunderstanding. Over to you, Margaret. Thank you, Patrick. I'd like to pass it to Romanus so he can share Tanzania's challenges and solutions with us. Yes, thank you, Margaret. Uh, I'm going to share the challenges in Tanzania, uh, where we have a frequent change of government leaders at this district at the regional levels where new leadership may not be familiar with folks or envision. Also, we have bureaucracy of authority during funds request approval for implementation. As we know, this also can delay approval of funds uh, and therefore can delay in the Abstract of the district where they may not assume the same positions, where as we know that Envision does not have control over these personnel chains. So this also is a challenge we are facing. And uh, the last challenge is the change of bank account at the district. Previous municipal controlled uh, to Epica accounting system, which is the local government or to control. The EPICA system faces internet connectivity challenges, therefore delay, delays uh, in accessing funds. Mo as most of areas are remote, and uh, once we face this problem, also we face the, uh, this, this, they face the access of funds for implementation. I will then discuss the solution to our challenges here in Tanzania. Uh, we normally encourage greater district advocacy in leadership and the uh, accountants also are, uh, I mean, training of accountants before MDA and the one to one training during supportive supervision whenever there are new accountants. We have uh, new training and the refresher training normally for these uh, both accountants and they discuss. Authorities to approve funds from the district accounts. Uh, thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Romanus. I'll now take a moment to show the audience a few screenshots of tools developed uh, and used by our panelists to implement and manage FOGs in their countries. We will provide copies of these tools via email to all participants after the webinar. So the first tools are from Nepal. Deepdi, would you be able to briefly explain these tools to the audience? Um, thank you, Margaret. Uh, yeah, uh, this is the grant tracker tool, we call it. Um, this tracker is a tool we, which gives us an overview and the current status of a particular uh, grant. Um, so uh, it helps us to, uh, uh, you know, know about uh, the status the payment we uh, if, if you have a copy of it it's very small right now in the uh, presentation but it has all the contract details the number uh, the contract amount the milestone details and the payments so this 
um, and uh, with this column, you can always customize. We can always add or delete any necessary um, um, item on it. So I think it's very useful to um, us uh, while tracking the grants. And the next tool is the LFMDA milestone checklist. Uh, right. Um, another is uh, the milestone checklist. Um, we have uh, prepared this checklist to help uh, uh, account person to understand uh, uh, what to expect during the particular milestone payment as a supporting document. So uh, this has also been a very helpful tool to us. Yeah. Great. Perfect. Thank you, Deepti. Patrick, how do you use the milestone checklist in Cameroon? Okay, uh, thank you, Margaret. The checklist in Cameroon is for each payment under each fog. The checklist you are watching is for the fog of the central region of the country. Uh, you know, one of our 10 regions has I mentioned it previously. The, this checklist provides information for both the financial and the programmatic decision making. At the top, uh, we indicate who is the recipient, the total amount awarded, and the balance amount before the payment we are about to achieve. And I would like to point out that following up this balance amount avoids any overspending all through the, the fiscal year. At the middle of the form, we have a table which allows checking if the recipient or the grantee submitted all the required deliverable documents. In this section, we can also make any comments about the quality, I mean the content of the submitted documents. The last part of this section is dedicated for general notes. You know, this is where HKI validates or rejects at the completion of uh, a specific milestone. And finally, the bottom of the checklist shows the approval process. And you will notice that uh, the last person to approve all the deliverable documents is the country director. And as soon as his approval is obtained, the financial team can proceed to the payment. And if, for instance, the deliverable documents were, were being rejected, we send a notification to the grantee explaining why we did not approve the documents and what additional information we are waiting for. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Patrick. IMA also shared their milestone checklist. Boniface, can you please explain how it is used by your team? Yeah, thank you, Margaret. Thank you so much. So this is a, one of the tools that we use to monitor program activities in Tanzania. So this provides us with a better visualization of the activities, milestones, and the steps where we are during program implementation. And usually we, we, it's flexible too, whereby we decide, we, we, we edit it depending on the type of the MBA that we are doing, whether it's community MBA or school MBA. So you can see on the top row, is showing the, the milestones and the activities. And on the first column is showing the districts and the is showing regions and the, under each region, the, the districts that we are working with at that time. Therefore, um, for each activity, we receive a report and this report is entered here by the designated uh, program officer in, 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 in here at the headquarters in Tanzania. So when we send the fixed obligation grants contract, once they are signed and they brought to us, the receiving officer enters the date when he received that particular uh, signed fork. He in, enters the, the, the dates when he received. So it, even when the funds are sent, when the district receives the funds, it gives us a feedback 
which we again enter on the respective cell of this Excel sheet. So this is how we, we, we work with. This tool is very nice that at each point or each week you can just open it, look at it and they see where, by, where you are and uh, which activity has not been reported. And then it is easy for our program officers to follow up with the respective district or regions to, to inquire why a certain activity has not been uh, uh, completed. So for the whole entire period of that particular MDA, these two need to be filled to the end. So each time we use this to, to review and they see the timeliness of activities. Uh, it's easy to understand why this activity was delayed with the reference to the date when the funds were received by the districts. So it helped us also to identify challenges in the districts. So when our supervisors are sent to go and supervise the activities, they are quite aware of the type of problems which is in that particular district or region. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Boniface. We'd like to thank all the presenters for sharing their experiences so far. While we are waiting for participants to type in any questions in the question box, I can address the few questions submitted during the registration process. Uh, the first question is, what is a fixed amount award or FAA and what is the difference between a FOG and an FAA? FAA stands for fixed amount award. Uh, in December 2014, the United States government finalized and published a new uniform rule popularly known as the supercircular. Under the supercircular, FOGs were replaced by FAAs. While the two mechanisms are very similar, one key difference is the ceiling amount. FOGs under Envision can have a maximum ceiling, ceiling amount of $500,000 per year for up to three years while FAA ceilings are limited to the simplified acquisition threshold, which is currently $150,000. Projects already underway when the super circular was issued require a modification to incorporate the new rule. The Envision Cooperative Agreement has not been modified, however, to incorporate the super circular, nor are there any plans to modify it. Therefore, we will continue to use FOGS under the Envision project. The next question submitted was, are the principles of FOGS adapted to programs and countries? If yes, what are the do's and don'ts? The answer is yes, FOGS can and should be adapted to the needs of programs and countries. Hopefully today's discussion has provided some insight into how this contractual mechanism can be adapted to support the Ministry of Health in your country, whether it be for MDA or other m and &E activities. Another question submitted during registration was, what do you do if the recipient discovers costs are higher than budgeted? Does the grantee accept the higher costs or do they try to renegotiate? Any actual differences between the estimated costs used to set the milestone payments and a grantee's actual incurred costs cannot be used to adjust the agreed upon amounts for each milestone. The grantee should not earn a windfall at any point. Grant activities should be implemented in accordance with the approved program description and detailed line item budget which should have been reviewed carefully prior to grant award to ensure proposed costs were reasonable. We did receive one question during the webinar. Uh, so the, this question is, how do governments, ministries of health, districts, etc., deal with pre-financing actions with their own funds, especially regarding the last milestone? Governments partners are often used used to starting implementation once funds have been received. Once funds have been depleted, implementation stops until funds are made available again. This might be faced especially regarding the last milestone. The question is if anybody has ever faced such an incident and if so, how implementing partners overcame that situation. So I'd like to ask Boniface to 
provide an answer to that question. Thank you, Margaret. Um, normally, for us in Tanzania, the last milestone for all the uh, two types of MBA is the monitoring and evaluation. Basically, it's data correction, compilation, and uh, reporting. And routinely, that is the, the, the finishing point of the MBA. So before then, you will really have the, the drugs being distributed, whether to school children or to the entire community. So that will really have, uh, they will have completed that particular activities and under normal circumstance, they must have sent the report to us and immediately send the funds for the final uh, uh, activity in the uh, last milestone. But in, in situations whereby there is anything that may cause that, uh, uh, that process to be delayed on our part to send the money, usually the districts, because this is the easy to implement activity, they always go on using their own funds to refinance the activity. And thereafter, they will receive the money after they have, come, uh, they have addressed whatever delays. The delays might be uh, bank transfers, or the, yeah, usually it's bank transfers that uh, delays the, the funds to, to reach the, 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 the districts. But just to make, uh, to inform the audience that most of the districts, they do have their own funds they, they can uh, switch from one less priority activity at the time to fund the MNE or the data correction activity, and then they get reimbursed once they receive the money from, from us. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Boniface. Patrick, would you like to add to this response? Uh, yes, Margaret, uh, thank you. In Cameroon, we noticed that the two last milestones were very challenging because if we we followed we, if we follow the process uh, the way we, be, we began, I mean paying 100% uh, of what is required on the field, we noticed that the MOH staff there is a risk that the activities could no longer be achieved on the field. So what we did in Cameroon uh, is that when we received deliverable documents at the penultimate milestones, we pay only 20% of the amount they need to complete the next step. I mean, the last one. And as soon as the grantee uh, has submitted the documents related to the last step, then we reimburse the remaining 80%. Thank, Thank you, you, Patrick. We'd like to ask the audience if they have any more questions for our presenters. You can type them into the chat box or you can raise your hand uh, through the GoToWebinar bar off to the side of your screen. Uh, we do have a new question that just came through. Uh, and that question is, what should I do when the deliverable is not delivered under the quality I want it to be? Uh, I'll go ahead and respond to that and then I would ask for any of the panelists to also chime in with their responses. Uh, my response would be that you should contact the grantee to discuss the concerns that you have with the deliverable and with any of the problems that you noted in the reports and encourage them strongly to revise the deliverable to provide the information or the data that was requested. And I would also encourage you not to pay that invoice until you are satisfied with the, the quality because once that invoice is paid, you lose the leverage to actually get the information or, or the data that you need. Do our panelists have any additions they'd like to make?
okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Margaret, sorry. Uh, we can, uh, in Tanzania, we do have sometimes receive reports that are of not good quality. And basically, uh, when we are doing community MDAs, some of our registers are not well filled. So exactly, we share the, 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 your response that we always behold the transfer funds for the next mile, milestone, but we do send our program staff to go and verify if it's the issue of data feeding, we can verify from the source documents to make sure that if it was a, a, a writing errors or it's really a problem that was uh, missed, missed during the, the, the particular activity. So that is how we always do. We don't send the funds until we address the, that problem. Thank you. Thank you, and I believe Romanus would like to add to that as well. Yes, uh, yes uh, we normally, we normally try, to try to minimize the uh, issue, uh, issues uh, in living uh, 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 with which uh, uh, are not in good quality. Because during implementation, we have to make sure that we have uh, staff from the central level and from the regional level to give supportive supervision. And the during supportive supervision is when they detect all these issues or maybe problems which might arise so that they can assist them also to make sure that the deliverables submitted will be in good quality. We don't wait until we receive the, uh, I mean the deliver deliverables which are not uh, in good quality. We do it in instant work during the implementation and the correction are made with our supervision. That's why we call it supporting supervision. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you so much. We did have another uh, question from the audience. This was around uh, delays in getting approvals from FOG or for FOGs from USAID and how we can deal with those. Um, and I would say that to better address this, country teams need to focus on advanced planning and you know, determining with the Ministry of Health when activities are supposed to take place at the field level and then looking at the calendar and backing up to ensure that plenty of time is allocated for the preparation and review of grant packages. Um, because the more advanced planning that we do, the better off we are, and then that will ensure that activities in the field are not delayed because of circumstances that often are outside of our control. Uh, do any of the panelists want to add to that? Okay, thank you. Are there any additional questions from the audience? All right, then. Uh, with that, we've come to the end of the webinar. We want to thank everyone for joining today. I'd like to acknowledge all of our presenters, as well as USAID, for their contributions. Slides of the webinar and copies of the tools presented will be emailed to everyone who registered or, and participated today. So with that, we'll close the session. Thanks again for joining us. And finally, I'd like to remind everyone to please complete the brief evaluation of today's webinar that will pop up on your screen in just a second. We really do appreciate your feedback. Thank you very much.